Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another book review on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and the book we're taking a look at today is Chris Curtis' work System Le Facho, published in 2002, coincidentally or not, the 200th anniversary of Casimir Le Facho's birth. Now, what is a Le Facho? That is, in fact, uh, the pinfire system, basically invented by Le Facho. Um, now, pinfires would be manufactured, there would be a prominent form of cartridge, basically in between uh, the percussion cap and the center fire, the modern brass center fire cartridge as we know it today. Uh, probably the most popular, the most common, and widely produced sort of intermediate cartridge. And this would be done under the work of two different Lufa shows. Uh, first, Casimir, who started off as an apprentice to the Swiss, Swiss gunsmith Pauli, who was one of the very first people to develop the self-contained cartridge, uh, and later Casimir's son, Eugene, uh, who took the Lufichot company and turned it from a reasonably successful sort of small enterprise into a truly massive enterprise, uh, which led to the, the predominance of pinfire revolvers in particular all over the place. Now, uh, I don't need to go into a huge old whole history of the pinfire system, that is actually the purpose of the first couple chapters of this book. Um, however, pinfires are really an underappreciated uh, si firearm system here in the US today. Uh, there are a slew of them out there, they tend to bring minimal value, uh, people don't really, the problem is people don't know much about them, and so people don't really care much about them, and this book is an attempt to start to fix that situation, because in a what, what people usually associate with pinfire is the sort of really junky, really cheap civilian pocket revolvers. Well. There was certainly a large element of that, but the pinfire system was also cutting edge technology for quite some time, and they were adopted by most of the militaries in Europe in one form or another. Um, and as the subtitle to this book suggests, uh, continuing the study of pinfire cartridge arms, including their role in the American Civil War, these were also used in the American Civil War, in fact, by both sides. So. Uh, this book is just over 300 pages. It is unfortunately all black and white, but what are you going to do? That, that does get the information across. And it serves as both a contextual history of the pinfire system and its inventors, as well as a study of both the military and the civilian firearms. There's a chapter on the military side, and then there are actually chapters on the commercial long guns made for the pinfire system and also the commercial handguns made for the pinfire system. In fact, multiples. There's, there's a chapter on commercial revolvers, and then there are also chapters on a few of the other types of guns, like uh, pinfire pepper boxes, and just weird pinfire guns, because this was a system that existed during a very creative part of uh, firearms development history, and so there's a wide variety of just weird gun-like things that are designed around pinfire. Uh, some of the, the knuckle duster revolvers, the combination pocket knife revolvers, or pocket knife pistols, uh, single uh, revolvers that where the barrel's built into a sword blade, uh, harmonica guns, derringers, you name it, all sorts of weird things have been built around the pinfire system. And so that's also covered in here. There's an entire chapter on specifically information for the collector, including several pages of just proof marks uh, by nationality and indicating what the proof marks indicate and what time period they come from, which is a really beneficial piece of information to have. Lefechaux at one point licensed out use of his patents to other gunsmiths in France and Belgium, and then of course later on his patents expired, and you, you would see pinfire systems being manufactured in many different countries, by a plethora of different companies and little shops, and there's often very little information surviving about who actually made them. So being able to basically decrypt some of the proof marks can be uh, very helpful in determining the nationality and the chronology of a particular gun. Um, overall, it's, it's hard to compare this to any other books on the subject, because there really aren't any other books on the subject. Um, this is not, unfortunately, not in any way a comprehensive book. There are so many little shops that manufactured these sorts of guns for such a long period of time that you it, writing like a comprehensive book on pinfires would be the equivalent of say, I'm going to write a comprehensive book on percussion revolvers. Well, yeesh, good luck. Um, that's going to be a massive volume. However, this is an excellent introduction to the subject, and like I said, today serves as really the most comprehensive book that we do have on pinfires. So, 
This is one where if you're interested in the development of firearms, this is an interesting uh, book because kind of condensed into one volume right here, you can get everything that there is really to know that is well documented on, on an entire class of firearms. Uh, if you're interested in this sort of mid 19th century uh, military or civilian firearms development, this is also a valuable piece for you. Um, beyond that, uh, definitely something for the American Civil War collector who doesn't know anything about pinfire guns because they were used in the Civil War much, which I think a lot of people don't realize, even American firearms collectors. Uh, back in ye olde days of American gun collecting, the pinfire was thoroughly disregarded because it wasn't seen as having any connection to the United States. Well, it actually did. Uh, price on the book is 50 bucks or $49.95. Um, I was unable to find any reference to the publisher selling it directly, so I think your best bet would be either Amazon or your favorite local, uh, local or online third-party bookseller. Um, still in print? I don't know how long that'll last. It's not a hugely popular book, but eventually this will go out of print and it will go up in price and you will be sad if you didn't get a copy of it back when it was just 50 bucks cover price. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.